Before I get this video rolling, I want to dedicate this video to Shauna and Scott. If you guys did not see my video from last week, I said that my Lego Robotics curriculum had been lost. It was written on a Google Doc on a Google account that I no longer have, and it just vanished. And Shauna and Scott came to my rescue. Thank you guys so much. The robotics community is just awesome. And they were able to retrieve my curriculum for me. And it, it was just um, kind of depressing for me because I had put so much time and effort. Basically, it took a whole summer to just sit down and write that curriculum down, make sure it was ordered and precise as I could get it. And they just saved the day. So thank you guys so much. I, I, I just owe you so much. So thank you. But you're watching this video for today because you're a first Lego League either coach or a student and you're just tired of doing first Lego League missions and not being accurate enough with your robot. Um, it veers off. It doesn't do the mission. It messes up more times than you're successful. And so today what I want to do is just help you go through some of your checklist items to make sure that you're doing everything you can to make your FLL missions as accurate as they can be. So I know exactly what you're thinking. You know, when you go to competitions and even when you're in your practices, you can one day just have everything go right. And then the next day it just blows up in your face and everything's wrong. And so today what I want to do is help you go through some of your checklist items to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure it's accurate. So the first thing I would say is line up your robot where you're the back of your robot or wherever is going to be sitting up against that wood is flush against the wood. So you're starting off as flat as you can be against the side board in your starting area. And what that does is it just allows your robot to go as straight as it can be. And you're not having to angle it or, you know, have it be in base where it's just not flat or straight up against something. Um, because when you are looking at your, in the, the first leg leg mat, your starting area, sometimes you can, you know, line up your robot wrong. And then if you angle it wrong, then everything is going to go wrong with your mission. But if you can find a spot in base where you can line it up against the wood, then you're guaranteed that at least it's going to start off straight and it's always going to be in the same spot. In fact, I we even go a step further is if you can have your first Lego League team set up the robot the same way every single time. Now, for some of you, you might say, you know, that's kind of impossible. But for those of you that are first starting off, I would say pick the same exact spot for all of your missions. That way there's no, hey, wait, what, what mission is this? Oh, wait, it needs to go to somewhere else. And so you're just basically, like I like to say, you're keeping it simple. You're trying to just have everything be the same way every single time. But definitely, I would say, have the back of your robot have maybe that 15 hole beam or something where it's flat, where you can just set that robot up against the wood and have it just go straight out. The second thing I would say is utilize those sensors. If you need sensors and your robot seems to be going off, I would say start with that gyro sensor to make sure that your robot is not veering off. In fact, I'll send you some links in the description of how you can use that gyro sensor to keep your robot from drifting off. You might also think about line following. You know, those black lines that they put on your first Lego League mat are there for a reason. They're help, you know, they're for a guide. And I know in the past, I've like told my teams, I'm like, yeah, those lines are awesome. But sometimes, you know, if your robot is going the, you know, on following that line, when you're done following that line, sometimes your robot is not where you want it to be. So get it for those of you that are saying yeah but mr you know the the line following is only good up until a certain point you're right um, because your robots once it's done following that line has to be accurate once you are stopped following that line so i totally know what you mean the third thing i would say is try to have your robot 
when it's coming up to one of your mission models, you can think about having that robot have some type of catch system where it's almost like in into orbit where your robot might be catching some part of the mission model where now you're not necessarily depending strictly on your robot perfectly lining up, but your robot can use something on the robot itself to guide itself in where your robot is now going, ooh, I was off by maybe a half inch, but as I'm coming into the mission model, it catches onto the mission model where it can now straighten itself. And so let me take a break right now to go over what my philosophy would be on your robot and missions. I used to coach basketball and I used to tell my players, we're looking for the highest percentage shot. So obviously a layup is a very high percentage shot, but who, which team is gonna keep giving your team layups? And so I always tell my players, you know, try to get into as close to the basket as you can because your percent is going to be as, you know, it's going to be higher the closer you get to the basket and it's going to drop off the farther away you get from the basket. And so it's the same thing with your first Lego League robot. You're trying to get the highest percent you can. And I would say the highest percent, obviously, you know, would be 100. But if your robot is completing 90 80 percent of the you know the mission of that time then you're looking pretty good mr hino our robot completes the mission 30 percent of the time then i would sit back and go okay how do we increase the percent of your robot getting the mission done and so i would say you know if your robot is trying to grab something i would say add more pieces to what you're grabbing with so you increase the chance of it latching on and grabbing it. I did a video last week and I don't know why I did this. I think it might have been just the way I think my brain works where there's those tubing in the game pieces and my brain sometimes reverts to sometimes my students where you want to have a piece go through the tubing and lift it up and I'm like why did I do that for it'd be a whole lot easier to just have something grab onto that tubing instead of going through the tubing and that's what I thought of hey let's try to have it instead of go through the tubing and lift it up let's go over the tubing and grab it so check this out okay so following my 80% to 100% rule what I want to do is show that I can get this game piece back past this line eight to nine to ten out of ten times. So let's try it out. What I did was I added this piece in here and this was kind of like the game changer just to add that extra piece in order to, you know, up the percentages that we would get this every single time. So there's one out of one. There's two out of two. And this is what you would want your teams to do is to just try to get that 80 to 100 percent percent all the time and if you don't get to that percent what can we do to get you know that robot to do that you know can we add some things change the code something so there's three out of three four out of four five out of five and this would have been so much better than trying to go through that hole that's when we start to drop our percentages so much better to just go over the top 
and trap it. Um, yes, we had to be. I had to be careful not to have this come down too far because if it comes down too far, then it lifts this back part up, and we don't want that. We don't want to lose control of you know the backwards here. So that's six out of six. Seven out of seven. Okay, so one more time, and I'm looking, you know, pretty good as far as percentages go. But, you know, we want we want a hundred here. Oh, oh. Okay, I, I don't consider that a success because it actually didn't go past the line. So that would be seven out of eight. that would be eight out of nine and one more time and you know this would be this would be a highly successful mission the code the attachment here so theirs would be our 90 percent nine out of ten times okay and so let's go to number four a way that you can make your robot more accurate and i would say when you're having your robot you know when you're putting your robot together, try to have your robot be equally balanced on both sides. Now, you might be saying, Mission, that's completely impossible. And what I would do is, when you're building your robot, try to have it be as symmetrical as you can. Because if you did not know this, if you have a robot that is weighted to one side more than the other, what's gonna happen is you're gonna send it in the opposite direction. Let me explain what I mean. Like pretend this is your robot here and it's heavier on this side. What's gonna happen is that's gonna lift this tire up and what's gonna happen is this wheel is gonna actually get more power and turn you this way. And so for those of you that your robot is veering off to the left or right, it might not necessarily be your code. It might just be that your robot is off-centered which means it's heavier on one side and it's going to cause your robot to drift. And so, Ms. Gino, do you have a way to figure this out? Like, is there a way to know which side's heavier than the other? I would say try to add, like, if you have a motor on this side that's making this side, you know, lighter, to try to add more pieces to balance that out. It's a lot easier said than done. Um, but that's what I would do is if you're veering off to the left or right, there it could be a whole bunch of things. It could be your code. It could be the tires. But most often than not, it's the robot that's unbalanced from side to side. Okay, guys. So I'm not sure how much of a help that was. Um, but definitely take a look at your robot. And if it's not completing the mission, 100 to 80% of the times. Come on guys, eight out of 10. There's something you need to do with your robot or your code or your attachments that needs to lift that percent up. And so what you need to do is just talk with your team and have them sit down and go, guys, what are we going to do? All right, guys, like always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. And again, hopefully you'll throw down in the comment section your thoughts and feelings about uh, today's topic so i appreciate you guys if you love what you watch hit that subscribe button because i always just feel so much love from this community all right guys i will see you in my next video